So as we have previously planned in our syllabus, we will start a new chapter in this class, chapter 22, Master Budgets. Well, compared with other chapters, this chapter is relatively a bigger chapter. So hopefully, I would use two classes to explain all the con all the concepts in this chapter. Otherwise, I would use three classes. So let's see our progress. Well, as you can see, uh, the title of this chapter is Master Budget. So it's all about the budgets in the business. How do we plan our our financial future? We all use a budget. Well, this concept, the concept of budgeting is, I believe is most likely very familiar to you. Well, in your daily life, let's see if you want to buy a laptop in Best Buy. You go to Best Buy and ask her and ask yourself a question. What is my budget on buying a new laptop? Would I buy a laptop in within $500? $800 or $1,000. And then you started to select a, the best laptop within your budget. But sometimes the laptop, the laptop that you like and you would like to buy is a little bit more expensive. I mean, a little bit more beyond your budget. So in this case, you're, you're running out of your budget. Well, same thing for the business. Same thing for the business. Uh, companies also use budget for the same reason as you do in your personal life. That is to plan, direct and control actions and the related revenues, revenues and expenses. The companies also use budgets to meet their goals. As part of long term planning, companies use a The companies develop a cooperative budget and set, set the goals to meet the objectives. So in this, in this chapter, we'll, first of all, get to know what is a budget and the benefits of budgeting. Secondly, we will get to know different types of the budget and the components of the master budget. Then it comes to the most important part of this chapter, that is how to prepare an operating budget. And financial budgets for a manufacturing for a manufacturing company and then we will learn how to prepare operating budgets and financial budgets for merchandising companies and lastly we will learn how to use information technology to assist us in the process of budgeting well first of all Let's see what is a budget. What is the uh, what is the objectives of budgeting? Oh, as well as the benefits, the procedures. 
A budget is a financial plan that managers use to coordinate a business activities. Managers use budgets in fulfilling their major responsibilities. First, they develop strategies such as a goal uh, to expand international operations or a goal to be a value leader in one market while diversifying into other markets. Companies, then the companies plan for specific actions to achieve those goals. The next step is to act to carry out the plans. After acting, managers compare actual resu results with the budget and then using, use the information to make control decisions. The feedback allows them to determine what corrective actions to take. For example, if uh, if the company spends more than expected in one area of operations, the managers must cut other costs or increase revenues. These decisions can then affect the company's future strategies and plans. Well, one benefit of budgeting is that it requires the managers to plan for the company's future. Decisions are based on this formalized plan, which helps prevent some have precise uh, decision making, but the the budgets are plans for future activities and may need to be modified. Another benefit is a budget coordinates a company's activities, creating a budget facilitates coordination and communication by requiring managers at different levels and in different functions across the entire value chain to work together to make a single unified comprehensive plan for the entire business. A third benefit is that the budget provides a benchmark that motivates employees and helps the managers to evaluate the performance. In most companies, part of the manager's performance evaluation depends on how actual results compare to the budget. This can be identified through a performance report. Budgeting requires managers to plan for the business future. Decisions are based on this formalized plan. Creating a budget facilitates, as, as I said, it, it facilitates uh, coordination and communication. And budgets can also provide a benchmark that, uh, as I said, to motivate the employees to compare their performance and 
facilitates the managers to evaluate the performance. Well, here, benchmarking. Benchmarking is a practice of comparing a company with its prior performance or with best practice from other companies. Companies might compare budgeted numbers with previous year's performance or the company or the company may compare their budgets to other companies through the use of industry uh, uh, industry averages benchmarking helps companies to determine where a company can improve and helps the company plan how to meet performance goals so through benchmarking process companies are able to develop budgets that presents a detailed road, road map of how performance goals will be achieved. The, the budgeting process varies from company to company. Well, for some small companies, this process may be relatively simple and somewhat uh, informal. But in larger companies, this process can be very complex with a budget committee coordinating this process. To achieve the benefits of motivating employees, the budget should include input from all levels. Many companies choose, choose to develop the budget from, from the bottom up. Well, that means from the lower level employees to higher level managers. Or this process is also called a participative budget. Well, a participative budget is a budgeting process where those individuals who are directly impacted by, by budgets are involved in the development of the budget. This requires significant coordination among the company's various business segments. So, the budgeting process usually begins several months before the beginning of the budget period. When a company uses participative budgeting, budgets tend to be more achievable because those directly impacted by the budgets help to create the plan. Preliminary budgets are developed at the departmental level and then flow up to the higher level of the companies for review by the managers, uh, the VPs, or the CEOs. So this bottom-up approach is better for employee moral and tends to result in more buy-in from employees as, as opposed to the budgets that are imposed on employees by the senior managers. So the most important part of budgeting system is getting managers and employees to accept the budgets so the company can reap the planning. For a few people enjoy having their work monitored and evaluated. 
if managers if managers use the budgets as a benchmark to evaluate employee employees performance managers must motivate employees to accept the budget's goal so here here is how they can do it first managers must support the budgets themselves Second, my, my, the managers must show employees how budgets can help them to achieve better results. And lastly, managers must have employees participate in developing the budgets so that the, uh, the employees feel the goals are realistic and achievable. Well, the manager's performance is, is also evaluated by comparing actual results to the budget. When they develop the company's budget, they may be tempted to participate in budgetary gaming and building budgetary slack. Budgetary slack occurs when managers intentionally understate ex expected revenues or overstate expected expenses. For example, managers might want to budget fewer sales and higher expenses than they expect. This increases the chance that they the actual performance will be better than the budget, and then they will receive a good evaluation. But adding slack into budgets makes it less accurate and less useful for planning and controlling. So this is budgetary slack. As well as some basic concepts of budgeting process. Next, let's see the different types of budget. Well, there are many different ways that companies create budget. Some companies will use the previous year's results and modify for the expected changes. In this traditional format, managers must only justify changes to budgets from the previous year's actual results. As an alternative, budgets can also be developed using a zero base budget in a zero based budgeting all revenues and expenses must be justified for each new period this approach assumes uh, operations are being started for the first time and the previous year's actual results are ignored. Zero-based budgeting is an effective way to limit the inflation of budgets and control unnecessary expenses because there are many different ways budgets are created and many different purposes. There are many different types of budgets. So now let's look at some different types. A 
a strategic budget. Well, here the term strategic generally indicates a long term goal. A company, a company will develop strategies such as becoming uh, the cost leader in the particular market or ex expanding into international markets. It may take several years to achieve these goals. A strategic budget is a long-term financial plan used to coordinate the activities needed to achieve the long-term goals of the company. Strategic budgets often span uh, a longer time, like a three to ten years, because of long because of uh, this longevity. They often are as detailed as budgets for shorter periods. So, strategic budgets, because it's long term, is sometimes not so detailed. And in contrast, an operational budget. An operational budget is a short term financial plan used to coordinate the activities needed to achieve the short term goals of the company. Well, the term operational generally indicates a short term goal. After, uh, after the company develops strategies and creates a strategic budget, the next step is to, is to plan for shorter periods. Our operational budget are generally much more detailed than strategic budgets. Operational budgets are most often one year in length, but may also span only a week, a month, or a quarter, depending on the company's needs. Some companies develop a variation of, a, of an operational budget that maintains a continuous projection into the future. A continuous budget is a type of operational budget that involves continuously adding one additional month as, as each month goes by. When a company uses, uses continuous budgeting, the company revises the budget by replacing the month that's just ended with a month at the end of the last month. So there is always a continuous 12 month period. Continuous budgeting allows a company to constantly monitor the budget and keep track of current and future amounts. So this This is how we classify the budgets in terms of in terms of length. The next classification. We can classify the budgets as static and flexible. So first of all, let's see. A static budget. A static budget is a budget prepared for only one level of sales volume. Uh, for example, in our, in our fictitious company, uh, Smart Touch Learning, 
we have used to uh, illustrate the concepts. The company may prepare a budget based on the annual sales of 2000 touchscreen tablets. So all revenues and expenses calculation would be based on the sales of 2000 tablets. This is static. In contrast, a flexible budget is a budget prepared for various levels of sales volumes. This type of budget is useful for what if analysis or sensitivity analysis. A smart touch learning company may expect to sell 2000 tablets, but a flexible budget showing results for selling 1,600 tablets, 1,800 tablets, 2,000 tablets, 2,200 tablets, and 2,400 tablets on each different sales level. So that it allows the managers to plan for various sales levels. And flexible budgets will be covered in the next chapter, I mean, chapter 23. Well, as you can see, the title of this chapter, chapter 22, is Master Budget. So let's get to know what is a master budget. A master budget is a set of budgeted financial statements and supporting schedules for the entire organization. Budgeted financial statements are financial statements based on budgeted amounts rather than actual amounts. Well, master budgets is classified as operational and static. This slide shows the order in which managers prepare the components of the master budgets for a manufacturing company. Well, this slide shows the master budget includes three types of budget. The first type, uh, operating budget. The second type, the capital expenditures budget. And the third type is the financial budget. The, the operating budget, the first time. The operating budget is the set of budgets that projects sales revenues, COGS, and selling and administrative expenses, all of which fit into the cash budget. And then the budget is financial statements. The first component of the operating budget is the sales budget, which is the cornerstone of the master budget. Because sales affect most other components of the master budget, the company should not, should not produce products it doesn't expect to sell. Additionally, variable products and period costs are projected 
based on the sales level. So the first step to develop the master budget is to develop the sales budget. And the second type, the second type of budget is, the, is capital expenditures budget. This budget presents the company's plan for purchasing properties, plants, equipment, and other long-term assets. The third type, as I said, is financial budget. The financial budget includes the cash budget and, and the budgeted financial statements. Prior components of the master budget provide information for the first elements of the financial budget, which is the cash budget. The cash budget details how the business expects to go from the beginning cash balance to the desired ending cash balance and fits into the budgeted financial statements. These, these budgeted financial statements include the budgeted income statement and budgeted balance sheets and look exactly like ordinary financial statements. The only difference is that they list budgeted amounts rather than the actual amounts. So now let's see how to prepare an operating budget for a manufacturing company. Well, here, you, are, you guys are required to prepare seven types, seven types of, of, of the operating budgets here. There are uh, sales budgets, production budgets, direct material budgets, direct labor budgets, Manufacturing overhead budgets, COGS budgets, selling and administrative expense budgets. Well, let's see them one by one. Uh, again, to illustrate the preparation of the master budgets, we still use the fictitious company Smart Touch Learning. Uh, as you can recall, this company manufactures its own brand of touch screen tablet computers that are, uh, that are preloaded with the company's e-learning software. The master budget is for 2021, prepared by quarter. And here, in this slide, we can see the balance sheets for December 31st, 2022. And it provides some data, uh, some, some data we will use in preparing the master budget for the next year. Okay, as I said, the first thing, the first part of operating budget involves preparing the sales budget. And as I said, the sales budget estimates the amount of sales revenue and is the, is the cornerstone of the master budget because the level of sales directly affects the production expenses and 
and almost all other elements of the master budget. Okay, we know that the budgeted total sales for each product equal the sales price multiplied by the expected number of the units sold. As we know, the, the sales and the marketing department at Smartest Learning Company predicts that the company will sell 500 tablets in the first quarter, with sales increasing by 50 tablets each quarter. And the tablets sell for $500 each. So, this slide shows the sales budget. Okay, let me say it again. The marketing, the marketing department predicts the sales of 500 units at the first quarter with sales increasing by 50 tablets each quarter thereafter. So, by the second quarter, the project is units to be sold is 550. For the third quarter, the project is units to be sold is 600. And for the fourth quarter, is 600, uh, 650. 650 units to be sold in the last quarter. So this is the only variable part in this sales budget. Oh, in addition to this, we, uh, we still have the total sales that are variable. Uh, The fixed part is the sales price. The sales price always goes to $500. $500. Same amount in each quarter. So for the total sales, we simply times the units sold with the sales price. For example, for the first quarter, 500 units times $500, we get $250,000 as the total sales for the first quarter. And the same thing in the second, third, and last quarter. So this is how we prepare the sales budget. All the information in the sales budget is based on the prediction from marketing department. Well, this is pretty much uh, like a straightforward. So, Next, let's see the production budget. Production budget determines the number of tablets to be produced during the year. And this is the basis for the production cost budget. Well, Production cost budget includes direct material budget, direct labor budget, and man manufacturing overhead budget. Additionally, 
the information is used to complete the cost of goods sold budget. So in this slide, this, this formula is the formula to calculate the number of tablets to be produced. It starts with the number of tablets projected to be sold. At this amount, to the desired number of tablets in any inventory. This determines the total number of tablets needed. Budgeted tablets. Mm. We start with the budgeted tablets to be sold and add this number to desired tablets in the end inventory. We get the total tablets needed and then minus tablets in beginning inventory. And finally, we get budgeted tablets to be produced. Well, here is the question. Why the company still wants a desired tablet in the inventory? What is this? What is this? Because the company doesn't want to end the period with zero inventory. It wants to have enough tablets on hand to begin the next period. And the company should have the minimum amount of inventory to be sure the company balances providing adequate amounts of goods to customers with turning over the inventory effectively. So keeping inventory at the minimum level could meet these needs and also to reduce the inventory storage cost, insurance cost, and warehousing cost. And also it reduces the potential for inventory to become absolute. So this is all about desired tablets in any inventory. Well, here we assume that the company desires to have an end inventory each quarter equal to 20% of the next quarter's sales. 20% of the next quarter's sales. So this is assumption. Using this assumption, we can determine the desired end inventory for each quarter by multiplying the following quarter sales by 20%. Uh, well, for the last quarter, the fourth quarter, we will need the forecasted sales for the, for, for the first quarter of 2022. Well, Uh, according to our per, uh, our prediction to make the sales budget well here it is we know the sales 
units, the protected sales units in each quarter. There are 500, 550, 600, 650. So for the first quarter in 2022, it should be 700. So here is our calculation. We know the desired ending inventory in each quarter in 2021. Well, once the calculation for desired end inventory are determined, the company can determine the production for each quarter. These slides, these slides illustrate the production budgets. The desired the desired and the inventory is added to the budgeted table to be sold to determine the total needed. The beginning inventory is then subtracted to determine the number of tablets to be produced each quarter. Well, you may ask, how, how do I know the beginning inventory in the first quarter? Here. Well, this, inf this information can be obtained from here. The balance sheet of the last year. Well, let's go back to, yes, here it is. The information is provided right here. It is listed as the finished goods inventory for the last year, at the end of last year. Well, we know the finished goods inventory accounts has a balance of $55,000. Because last year, the sales price for each tablet is $200. And... No. I don't mean the sales price. I mean the cost. The cost of each tablet last year is two hundred and seventy-five dollars. So knowing this information, we use fifty-five thousand dollars divided by two seventy-five. We know the units at the end of the last year is 200, 200 units. So this is how we know the ending at uh, the beginning inventory at 2021. This is how we know 200 right here. So we used the formula just listed in the previous chapter. We use budgeted tablets to be sold plus desired tablets in the inventory and minus tablets in beginning inventory. We get the budgeted tablets to be produced in this period. Well, here is one thing that you should pay attention to, which is the total column. The total column is not always equal to the sum of the numbers in the row. 
For example, both ending and the beginning inventories are not totaled. Instead, the number used in total column for desired tablets in end inventory is the end inventory for the last quarter. And the number used in total column for tablets in the beginning inventory is the beginning inventory for the first quarter. So here's here's the thing that you need to pay attention. The beginning inventory and end inventory in total column are for the year, not the sum of four quarters. That's why we need to carry the beginning inventory as total here or the end inventory as the total column here. All right, this is production budget. And as I said, the production budget is the basis for production cost budget, where production costs budget includes direct material budgets, direct labor budgets, and manufacturing overhead budgets, which are three types of the uh, three components of the production cost. So next, let's see, how do we prepare these three types of budgets based on production budgets? Well, before we get started, we need to know that these these numbers uh, what do they mean well they mean the budgeted tablets to be produced in each quarter 410 560 610 660 oh, well let's go ahead to see how to prepare First of all, direct material budgets. Well, now, since the company has determined the number of tablets to be produced each quarter, the next step is to determine the product costs for the tablets. The direct material budgets estimates the amount of material to be purchased to meet the company's production needs. The purchasing, purchasing department has projected that uh, each tablet requires three pounds of direct material and the expected cost of direct material is $50 per pound. Again, here's the useful information. The purchasing department project is that for each tablet, it requires three pounds of direct material and each pound, the cost of each pound is $50. So the company now 
needs to determine the amount of the materials to purchase each quarter. The amount of the indirect materials uh, has been determined to be insignificant and will not be considered in preparing the direct material uh, budget. So let's ignore this part. I mean, the indirect materials. So that means the amount of ma the amount of materials in the raw material inventory accounts is assumed to be only direct materials. So just as the finished goods inventory account must be considered when calculating the amount of tablets to produce, the raw material inventory account must be considered when calculating the amount of materials to be purchased. So here is the formula. We use uh, budgeted tablets to be produced times direct material cost per unit. We get direct material de uh, needed for production plus desired direct material in any inventory. We get total, uh, total direct materials needed. And then minus direct material in beginning inventory. We get the budgeted purchase of direct material. Well, let's assume that at the end of last year, the balance, the balance of raw material inventory is $30,000. We can know this information from the balance sheets last year. This $30,000 or in other words, uh, 600 pounds because, because as I said, the cost for each pound is $50. The company desires the ending balance in raw material inventory to be 40% of the next quarter's budgeted direct material. The desired ending balance for the first uh, for the uh, for the fourth quarter is uh, this number is given. 852. So, I mean, in your future homeworks, this number will be given. Because there's no information for 2022, for the next year of the budgeting process. So, here is the calculation of the desired inventory, desired end inventory of each quarter. For the first quarter, we use the next quarter. Next quarter's production times three pounds per tablet times 40%. So here we know the desired end inventory for each quarter. Here we can know 
we can get the budgeted direct material count. We use the budgeted tablets to be to be produced. Well, if you uh, you should be familiar with these four numbers. These four numbers are extracted from the production budget, right? I just introduced how to prepare the production budget. And these four numbers are the resulted numbers from per from production budget. The budgeted tablets per to be produced for each quarter times direct material per tablet. It should be three pounds. We get the direct material needed for production. Then we plus the desired direct material in any inventory. We get the total direct materials needed. And then we minus this, this amount to direct materials in beginning inventory. Which is carried from the last period's ending inventory. Okay. This is the beginning inventory for each period. Well, for this amount, again, I just explained that this amount is extracted from last year's balance sheet. Last year balance sheet, 600, 600 pounds. Or $30,000, right? So now we get the budgeted purchase of direct material. Well, in terms of dollar, we have to time the budgeted, uh, the budgeted pounds of direct material with the unit price per pound, which is, which is $50 per pound. Finally, we get this direct material budget. Budgeted dollar amount for each quarter. All right, this is direct materials budget. All right, so far, any questions? No? Well, I understand that uh, this chapter is, um, I would say, difficult. But this, this chapter, you know, you have to deal with a lot of numbers in a lot of budgets. So sometimes you get confused with, uh, with so much information. Well, the terminology is information overload. I would say these, uh, these three budgets, production budgets, uh, sales budgets, production budgets, and direct material budgets are the most difficult ones. After these three budgets, we come to a little bit easier budgets. So next, let's see an easy budget. 
which is direct labor budget. So this is relatively simple. Well, direct labor budget estimates the direct labor hours and related costs needed to support the production budget. The production manager projects that each tablet's computer requires three hours of direct labor. And direct, each direct labor hour costs $25. So this is the estimation of direct labor. And again, this budget starts with these numbers extracted from our production budgets. They are the budgeted tablets to be produced. So budgeted tablets to be produced times three hours per unit we get the direct labor hours needed to needed for production and then times the direct labor cost per hour which is twenty five dollars per hour we get the budgeted direct labor cost Mm, this is relatively easier. Okay, this is direct labor budget. Next, let's see the manufacturing overhead budget. The last product, uh, the, the last type of product cost to consider is manufacturing overhead. So manufacturing overhead budget estimates the variable and fixed manufacturing overhead needed to meet the company's production needs. The production manager works with the cost accountants to project the variable cost at $20 per tablet. Additionally, they project the fixed cost are 12,000 per, per quarter for depreciation and $15,440 per quarter for other fixed costs, such as utilities, insurance, and property tax. The manufacturing overhead budget calculates the budgeted overhead costs for the year and also the predetermined overhead allocation rate for the year. So here we use this formula to determine the predetermined overhead allocation rate. Same thing, we use the total estimated overhead cost divided by the estimated quantities of, of overhead allocation base. So this is our manufacturing overhead budget. And again, it starts with the numbers resulted from the production budget. This is the variable overhead part. The variable part. Well, 
as, as I uh, just said, the production manager projects is the variable manufacturing overhead over overhead cost at twenty dollars per tablet. So here we use the budgeted tablets to be produced times twenty dollars for each quarter. And then the the reminder are the fixed part depreciation, utility, insurance, property tax. We just sum up them together. Uh, uh, variable, variable overhead part plus the fixed overhead part. We get the total. The total number divided by the allocation base, which is direct labor hour. Well, these four numbers are extracted from the previous budget. I mean, the direct labor budget. So we use this number. This total divided by the total labor hour, we get $23 per labor hour. All right, since we have the direct material budget, direct labor budget, and manufacturing overhead budget, we can have the projected COGS or the COGS budget. Well, lastly, uh, COGS budget shown here. The last problem that you should notice is that the company uses first in first out inventory costing method. So for the first quarter, if you can recall that for the first quarter, the company predicts a sales of 500 units. So using FIFO method, the first 200 tablets should, should reflect the cost from the ending inventory from last year. Because last year, we still have an ending balance of 200 tablets in finished goods inventory. So the first 200 tablets in COGS budgets should be carried from last year in the inventory. And then the next 300 tablets are carried from this year's. So that's why we can see these two parts in the first quarter's COGS budget. For the remaining second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter, the calculation is pretty much simple. We use the project sales for each quarter times the cost of product. which is $294 produced in 2021. Well, this is COGS. And lastly, let's see 
how we prepare the setting and the administrative expense budgets. The cost accountants works with the office and the sales managers to develop the setting and the, and the administrative budgets. This budget estimates the setting and the, and the administrative expenses needed to meet the company's projected sales. Cost behavior is also considered for this budget with costs designated as variable or fixed. The, the smartest learning company projects the falling sales and the administrative costs for 2021. For fixed parts, we have uh, salaries expense, rent expense, insurance expense, and the depreciation expense. For variable part, we have the supplies expense to be 1% of sales revenue. So, Here we have the setting and the administrative expense budget, as I said. This, 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 and this, these four expenses are fixed. The only variable part is supplies expenses to be 1% of sales revenue. Well, the sales revenue is simply calculated as the units to be sold, uh, the projected units to be sold times the sales price. This is sales revenue times 1% to be supplies expense. Then we simply sum up them together. We get setting and the administrative expense budget. All right, that's the end of today's class. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. All right. Thanks for your attendance. I will see you on Wednesday. Thank you, Professor. Bye-bye. Thank you.